Praise be Jesus Christ, and thank you for joining me for this Animode short lesson. This lesson is on Animode cards, the Ark of Noah, which connects with the card Ark of Peter. And we will be focusing on the Articles 3, 9, and 12 of the Apostles' Creed. When we first look at this lesson, we're going to make a distinction between what is natural to us and then what is um, what grace, what is, what is nature of God, the eternal life. And so we'll look at John 17, 3. Um, so eternal life, this is the very life of the Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We have the lover who loves the beloved, then the beloved who returns that love, and that is the shared love between. This is what we call the eternal exchange of love between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so it is this eternal exchange of love, which is the very life of God. It's the divine life. It's eternal life. And this is what Jesus is telling us at the Last Supper. He tells his apostles, but then of course all of us. This is John 17, 3. At the Last Supper, Jesus says, now this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou have sent. So now this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom thou has sent. So we begin to know, of course, the Father through the Son. And this is that partaking of the eternal life. This is our goal. We can't have this just on our own. This doesn't come to us by nature because we are by nature human. And this is something is by nature is divine. And so how does a human share in the divine nature? It can only be done through Jesus Christ. And so this is where we take something that's natural to us, our nature, and then we partake, partake in that eternal life. Um, one way you can think of this is kind of like um, a match or so. That So you can think of the, the, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as being a match. And then on the head of that match, all of those uh, sticks or those matches together, you have uh, the fire. So the fire here would represent, the, um, of course, the essence of God, the substance of God, God or divinity, eternal life right there shared with all. So in other words, God the Father is almighty. God the Son is almighty. God the Holy Spirit is almighty. God the Father is eternal. God the Son is eternal. God the Holy Spirit is eternal. That is that fire there, the divine life, the eternal life. And then uh, each of those sticks, of course, is the person, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We are called to share in that fire to share in that eternal life. Now that is not natural to us. What is natural to us is human nature. So how is it that human nature can then share in this eternal life? Um, you can imagine an analogy here of water. If you have water, water has water nature. If you have fire, fire has fire nature. And so how would then the water participate in the fire nature? You would have to put the pan of water over the fire and then that water would be participating in the heat, participating in the fire through that heat. And so this is true of us as well. What happens with us as humans is we will then um, be, we are allowed to participate in, we are invited to participate in the very life of God. And in this lesson, we're really going to talk about how do we do that and how does God call us to that. So first we'll look at the fact that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the Trinity, will come to us through a holy family. And so here we have what is called the three, the two trinities, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and the earthly trinity, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. And so if you look at the picture here, you can see this is like the, the eternal trinity of the Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son coming down vertically. And then you have the earthly trinity of the holy family with Mary, Jesus, and Joseph there. And in the in the horizontal there, and what is the link between? If you look at the diagram, then you look at the picture. The link between these two trinities is Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Um, and here you have a beautiful image of this is how we are invited. This is the primary way through the incarnation, right? That Jesus Christ was conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. You see the Holy Spirit there. You see the Virgin Mary there. Conceived of the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. The incarnation is our invitation into the Trinity. So Jesus Christ comes down. He takes that step down. You can see him on that step there. He takes the step down. And then you can look. There's that step there for us to be invited in. We're invited into the Holy Trinity. Uh, that We're invited into, sorry, to the Holy Family. And then through, our, through that invitation, because God is becoming man through a family, we're invited into his very life through the gospel 
to share in his life. And by that sharing, then we are participating in the eternal life of the Trinity. We want to do that now on earth, and we want to do that for all eternity. Of course, the opposite of that would be um, eternal death. It would be um, forever being in hell, separated from God, separated from all the saints. And so when we look, uh, we'll continue to go forward now and see how also we share in this life. We have the Father, the Holy Spirit, and the Son. And then in marriage, which is a natural institution, we have the groom that loves the bride. This is the wife. The bride and the wife returns that love and the shared love between his children. So you can see how family life here is an imitation of the Trinity. You have the groom who is, is really um, supposed to be modeled after Christ. You have the bride, which represents the church. And so, of course, the husband loving the wife, the wife returning that love, and then you have that great life of the children. And so here, on a natural level, we have something on the natural level, something that all humans have experienced from the beginning of time because God created marriage at the beginning of time. Then we see that this is a model or an image of the Blessed Trinity. So it really is through family life that we begin to know the Trinitarian life. Um, it's, 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 and all of us um, are a part of a family. So whether we are married or not, all of us came into this world through a family. So we may not be a groom, we may not be a bride, but all of us are children of a family. And this family ends up becoming kind of the first um, image of the Trinity for us. Um, we call this matrimony. Why? Because matri means mother. So the bride, the wife will then become a mother. And what will this marriage, what will this institution of matrimony do centered on the woman? Matrimony, the office of the woman, it is the woman who is able to conceive, the woman that bears and brings forth life. And so matrimony, the office of the mother, um, is to bring forth physical life, procreation and education. And then we see that this is also a sacrament or an image of the Trinity in uh, St. Paul's work in Ephesians. He writes in Ephesians 5 how this is a great sacrament. This is a great mystery. And what he means by that is that the husband is like Christ, the wife is like the church. Again, this is a natural, this is common to all. This is a natural institution that is already made in the image of the Trinitarian love, that eternal exchange of love. And so even though the Trinity is a perfect eternal exchange of love, we see in, in family life, we see in marriage, that there is an exchange of love. It's not eternal, and of course it's not always perfect, but it is an exchange of love, and it is in the image of the Trinity. We also have another example of this, um, Father, the Holy Spirit, the Son, in holy orders, or in the church. And so you have Jesus Christ, the Son, the priest is, an, is another Christ, an altos, altos Christis, and the Son, the priest, the Son loves the church, Christ loves his church, the priest loves his parish. The bishop loves his diocese. The Holy Father loves the universal church, right? So you have this, this love going that way. You have, of course, the church that loves Christ. You have the parish that loves his priest. And you have that sacramental life that comes from that. And so we see already here that in his mercy, God is giving us three ways to reach out to us. He first and foremost, through the incarnation, is reaching out to us through the Holy Family in which his son becomes man. And then we're going to see in the natural institution of marriage that he will reach out to us there through family life, giving us physical life, and then bringing us to that spiritual life, that sacramental life of a church. What does he say of the church? That it'll be with us until the end of time. So I, I'm pretty convinced that marriage will be with us until the end of time. And, I'm, and I know, because our Lord said it, that the church will be with us until the end of time. And so we have, again, this image of the Trinitarian life. Um, this is called a patrimony. Patri means father. And so we have the holy orders. We have the spiritual life. The priest, the deacon, the bishop is, is, is ordained to take care of the children, to give spiritual life to the children. And so with this, you're going to see that there is a movement. There is, of course, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit who want us to share, to partake in their divine life. And so the Son um, incarnates, right, to share with us. We have physical life that we're given through a family. That family then brings us to the church. It is our family that is usually the first people that share the message of Jesus Christ, the gospel message with us. It's usually through the family that we receive Jesus. 
And then it's our family that typically brings us to the church. It's the family that gives us physical life and then brings us to the church so that we also can have spiritual life. And then it's through the church, like the Ark of Noah, that we are elevated. We are brought up, not just from the natural realm or the eternal, or I'm sorry, the temporal realm, but um, we are actually brought up like that ark that's floating up, 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 up. So you can think of the water as the grace. And, and through this life of the church, through this sacramental life, through this spiritual life, we float up, up, up to eternal life. We are getting closer and closer while in the church, while participating in the, in the sacramental life. We are getting closer and closer, um, partaking more and more in the eternal life now and for all eternity. Now, Jesus talks about these two great um, institutions of marriage and the church. He talks about this in Matthew 19, 1 through 12. It's such an important verse because in Matthew 19, 1 through 12, he's actually affirming both marriage and the church, holy orders, in the same 12 verses. What does he say of matrimony? He says it's indissoluble. He says the bond between the groom and the bride, the bond between the husband and the wife, the bond then in between son and the church, Jesus and the church, is indissoluble, indissoluble. That bond cannot be broken. Um, and then what does he say about holy orders? He says that celibacy for the kingdom is a good and noble thing, and those that can do that should do that. And so Jesus Christ himself, the very words of our Lord, affirm the necessity of family life and the indissoluble bond and the necessity of holy orders celibacy for the kingdom. So again, we have physical life given to us through the family, spiritual life given to us from the church. Both are in the image and likeness of the Blessed Trinity. Um, and, and both enable us to partake or help us, of course, to partake in the eternal life now so that we can partake in it for all eternity. That is what we're wanting to do. So we see in this the great uh, mercy and love of God, how much he loves us, how much he calls us to himself and to participate in his life. Um, we want to participate in that life now and for all eternity. We never want to be separated from that life. Separation from that life now would be mortal sin. Separation for that life for all eternity would be hell, and we don't want that. So in, in the Apostles' Creed, when we say um, that we believe in eternal life or life everlasting, we know that life will be everlasting or death will be everlasting. One of those will be everlasting. We, Our soul will continue to live forever and um, exist forever and live forever in, in eternity, and we will get receive our bodies back. And so we want to make sure we do that in life eternal, not death eternal. Um, heaven, not hell. Another thing to note here is um, the fact that Satan hates the church and Satan hates marriage and family. Satan would like to destroy, of course, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. He would love to destroy that eternal life, that divine life, that grace, but he can't. He is not able to do that. He would love to destroy the Holy Family, but he can't. He can't touch the Holy Family, Mary, Joseph, and Jesus. So what does he go after? Since he can't get the Trinity, since he can't get the Holy Family, what is he going to go after? He's going to go after the two institutions that elevate us to the eternal life, that give us the life of grace, and that point us to that and move us towards that. He's going to attack marriage and family, and he's going to attack the church. He's going to attack everything you see in that diagram. He's going to, un he's going to attack husbands. He's going to attack wives. He's going to pit them against each other. He is going to uh, try to prevent uh, children f from you know, using contraception, using abortion, of course. He is going to attack priests. He's going to attack parishes and dioceses and, and parishioners. And he's going to attack the sacraments. So we have to be on guard. We have to be sober and alert against these attacks. We know that these are the means um, in which we are able to receive and participate in the eternal life. And so we protect them. We participate in them. Thank you for joining me for um, this Animode uh, short lesson um, in which we talked about the Ark of Noah in the Old Testament and its connection to the Ark of Peter um, in the New Testament, the church and the domestic church, the family. Articles 3, 9, and 12 of the Apostles' Creed.